we are on our last um, body system. We're all the way to the reproductive system and you've stuck it out. So pat yourself on the back because I can't reach you from here. And let's talk about reproduction. Uh, reproduction is an interesting body system because reproduction is not, the reproductive system is not needed for a person to survive. It could be removed and you could survive. Uh, really the only, the only one that you can live without. Um, and yet the reproductive system is the reason we're alive. Um, from the point of view of evolution and natural selection, uh, all, the, all the rest of the stuff, the heart and the brain and all of that is just to get you to reproduction. Uh, make sure you review reproductive anatomy. Um, uh, let's uh, follow the path that sperm would take on its way uh, towards a fertilization event. So sperm are going to be made here in the testes. <clears throat> Please remember that in the testes, this is male reproductive system, um, that the sperm are made in the seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules are these little tiny, teeny tubes. Um, and we're probably gonna look at that a little bit more. Um, but those are where sperm are made. Um, making sperm actually a little bit tricky, um, but that's not where testosterone is made. Yes, the testes do make testosterone, but not the cells that make the sperm. The cells that make testosterone are called interstitial cells, and they are the cells in between the little loops of those seminiferous tubules. Now, from the testes, uh, those seminiferous tubules, the sperm would be moved to the epididymis. And the epididymis is where sperm is stored. It can be stored as long as 60 days. And the epididymis is also where sperm will finish their maturation. You no, know, just hanging out there. When there is an ejaculation, when there is, ejaculations are usually accompanied by an orgasm, but technically a separate event. Um, but when there is an ejaculation and the sperm are going to be uh, introduced hopefully into a female, uh, then those sperm are going to be moved by this structure called the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. And it's a long journey because it has to go up on the front of the lower part of the body wall and then in through the inguinal canal, the tube wraps around to the backside of the man's urinary bladder. And it's here that the sperm that are in a very teeny droplet of fluid at this point are going to be joined by fluid from this structure, the seminal vesicle. And the seminal vesicle has got um, a secretion that is going to energize the sperm and start them swimming. Um, then they go through this little tiny tube, the ejaculatory duct, as it goes through this structure, the prostate gland. And the prostate gland is going to add its secretions to the seminal fluid and the sperm um, right here at the prostatic urethra. The fluid from the prostate gland is going to be um, alkaline, which is meant to neutralize the acidic environment of the vagina uh, where the sperm will arrive. And it also has got proteins that will create kind of a gel-like structure um, of the ejaculate once it's inside of the vagina. Um, so now we would actually consider this uh, mixture to be semen. So semen is not made by the testes. The testes make sperm. Semen is the product of, of mostly the seminal vesicle and the prostate and then it'll be ejaculated out of the penile urethra and you know, theoretically into a vagina. The bubble urethral gland in humans is really very small. So makes a secretion, but it's, it's very, very small. Now, um, a little bit more about the male reproductive system. The, uh, the testes of males <clears throat> in most mammals, but not all, uh, are found down here in a structure called the scrotum. The reason for this is that optimal development 
of sperm in humans happens at a body temperature that is much cooler than 98.6. So uh, these, the testes are outside of the abdominal cavity so that the testes can be cooled down. Um, but that's not that easy a job because you want them to be cooler, but not too cool. So this whole arrangement is organized by a couple of different layers of muscles that are all integrated into this external part of male genitalia. There is muscle in, in the scrotum itself that will cause a crinkling or which causes a lower surface area if the scrotum is too cool to try and maintain its warmth. And then there's this muscle called the cremaster muscle. And the cremaster muscle's job is to pull the testes up towards the body wall if they are too cool or if the testes are too warm, the cremaster muscle relaxes and lets them hang down farther away from the body wall. Um, also facilitating a cooler body temperature of the testes um, is this complicated uh, vascular system called the pampiniform plexus. And the pampiniform plexus allows uh, arterial blood carrying oxygen to cool off as it goes down to the testes and then that venous blood to warm up before it goes back into your abdomen. Um, I don't, we don't really have time to talk about it, but the uh, sperm count of modern men has declined significantly in the last hundred years. There's all kinds of arguments over it. Uh, I don't know enough about the controversy to get into it, uh, but there are some people who believe it's because of the pervasive um, use of plastics. I don't know if that's true. However, we do know that one of the things that modern society imposes on men um, is clothing and a sedentary lifestyle. So keep in mind that these guys can stay cool uh, pretty much only as long as they're allowed to hang free of the body wall and as long as people are up and walking around. Um, and those are two things that don't happen very much anymore. For one thing, a more common kind of underwear now are like jockey shorts, so tidy whities that hold these guys up next to the body wall, that keeps them warmer. And then most of our entertainment and even our occupation is seated. So then men are like a mother hen sitting on her eggs, keeping them nice and warm. And that warmth um, is also seen as a source of uh, male infertility. So, so there you go. One, one of the things I'll ask men that have poor sperm counts uh, to do is to change their clothing, change their type of underwear to boxer briefs, I mean boxers, and also to either stand at their desk or to sit on a cooling, uh, like, like a cold pack kind of a thing. Oh, a little bit more. Uh, this particular penis has not been circumcised. Circumcision, um, it can be a religious ritual or it can be just a... Um, a medical procedure, but uh, circumcision is to remove right here. See right that line right there? That is the beginning of the, of the human prepuce. Uh, the prepuce gets called the foreskin, but you know it as the prepuce. And uh, if it is cut off there, um, it, uh, that is a circumcision. A circumcision will expose the male glands. Um, uh, it, it really makes uh, life easier for whoever's in charge of changing the diapers in the baby's household. That's, that's one thing. Uh, it, in terms of world health, there is a small but significant difference in, the, in how likely a man is to get or spread HIV. Um, so circumcision has a benefit in that regard. We, we see that as important in terms of world health, but probably not in terms of um, health of Americans.
right? So circumcision. Oh, what is a vasectomy? Uh, actually, let me go back to a different slide to show you a vasectomy. So right here, do you see that's the vas deferens? And right here at the posterior aspect of the scrotum, as it gets close to the perineum, uh, the vas deferens travels very uh, close to the skin. Uh, so in a vasectomy, a vasectomy is a, um, it is a surgical procedure that will prevent uh, conception. So it is a surgical contraceptive method. Um, when men have a vasectomy, it should be considered permanent. Um, like it shouldn't be something someone does knowing you're planning to uh, reverse it. However, um, with modern surgical techniques, it is reversible in about 80 to 85% of the cases. Easy to get a vasectomy, hard to reverse it. However, the equivalent surgery in women is considered not reversible at all. So they're very different. Uh, so a circumcision, <laughs> no, a vasectomy. A vasectomy is done just in the doctor's office right there on that little bench that you sit in while they're taking your blood pressure. It requires a small injection of lidocaine. Right here, the doctor will make a single incision uh, reach in with a special tool, grab out the vas, vas deferens, uh, tie it off, and cut it. Um, the, the, not all doctors cut it, but if you don't cut it, it is likely to recannulize. Um, and then that's it. There aren't any stitches, nothing. It takes 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, much less um, complicated than having a uh, cavity filled. Uh, it takes a lot less time. All right, circumcision vasectomy. Uh, let's quickly review uh, female reproductive anatomy uh, and let's do the same thing. Let's follow the path that the egg will take. Um, eggs are made here in the ovaries. Women have two ovaries. Men have got two testes, generally speaking. And um, each ovary is responsible for making eggs and for making estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. So three different hormones. Um, the ovaries of, uh, of females uh, will release an egg um, in the process of ovulation. I've got that on a later slide. Um, ovulation is releasing an egg. Uh, uh, women's bodies generally will make and release one egg about every month, um, whereas men make and relieve, release millions and millions of sperm. I think it's more than a million sperm every day um, making them. Uh, so there's a real difference in the number of what are called gametes that are made by the two sexes. When that egg is released, um, it just gets like popped out. <laughs> and then it's up to these guys, the fimbrae, to kind of catch it and send it on its journey down uh, the uterine tube, which is also known as the fallopian tube. The, uh, the lining of the uh, uterine tube, it's lined with ciliated cells and mucus producing cells. The egg does not swim, has no way of moving. So it is being passively moved along uh, by the action of those cilia and contractions of the uterine tube. Uh, if there is going to be a pregnancy, uh, eggs and sperm will meet right up here in this widened area of the infundibulum. Um, so that, that the infundibulum is that uh, trumpet kind of part of the uterine tube. And then if there is a pregnancy, uh, that fertilized egg will take about a week, you know, six or seven days to be moved down into the uterus. The uterus is where the pregnancy should uh, start up. And uh, the uterus has got different layers. It has got um, a thick muscular layer called the myometrium, a thin inner layer called the endometrium. The endometrium itself has got a couple of layers um, that will probably mention. And it's in the endometrium that a successful pregnancy would 
tunnel in, bury itself, and set up housekeeping for the next nine months or so. Um, if there is not a successful pregnancy, then that egg will die. And I, I probably it just gets reabsorbed. It probably doesn't make its way down to the uterus at all if it hasn't been fertilized. And then um, the lining of the uterus, the inner part of the endometrium ends up dying and dead endometrium uh, comes out through the cervical canal and down through the vagina and that dead endometrial lining that happens every time there would have been a pregnancy, uh, but it didn't happen. That dead endometrial lining is what we refer to as menstruation or a woman's period. Um, but good. We will start up here at the beginning of our next lecture.